I think we have time to take one more call this evening, and it's going to be Susan from Indiana. Susan, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? I've been listening, so I'll just get straight to my question. Go ahead. Um, it's actually regarding um, a CPS case, or I believe it was a case, and I don't exactly understand what I've done, and I'm in a situation now where I need to act for my kid's safety. Um, basically, um, I my neighbors called in a complaint, which I found out on uh, September of 2018, and I didn't. All of a sudden, three police officers showed up at my apartment, and they came knocking on the door. One was unmarked, and they looked kind of confused when we let them in, and they said they were looking for uh, Susan, and they used my maiden name. And I said, I'm that, but my name is, and I told them my legal name, last name. And they said they were called, and I mean, I can't even tell you what this <laughs> They said uh, they were looking for someone passed out on heroin with uh, their children running around and uh, that they wouldn't be able to get in my front door because of piles of trash and uh, they would smell cat and dog feces. And the officer could tell right away that it was a prank call because um, he could tell I was sober. My kids were at school and uh, the other two left in like 10 minutes. And he actually went outside with me, and he actually gave me the phone number, and we found out it was a text-free number. And he was angry, and he was very polite, and he left. And uh, what happened next was two days later, a CPS worker showed up at my door. Mm -hmm. And by this time, I was angry because I'm not going to go into the past, but I've been dealing with it on and off for three years since I left my abusive ex-husband. Um. So I wouldn't let her in. I had been cooperating every time they came on charges. Let's just say there were 21 unsubstantiated investigations since I left my ex-husband. Okay, I always, I passed hair follicle tests, drug tests, always let them in. Well, I stood up to him and I said, the police have been here. I said, uh, if you don't have a warrant, you can't talk to my kids. My kids are in school. Please leave. And she had a police officer with her, and he didn't even say anything because he knew that I was in my right, and they left. Didn't hear anything until about uh, 20 days later, she came back, and I said she wanted to see my kids again. I said, well, uh, you should, if you've been uh, investigating me now for almost a month, so you should know my kids are in school. She said, well, are you going to allow me to talk to them? I said, do you have a warrant? She said, no, but um, I'm really trying to wrap this up if you just cooperate. And again, I said, please get a warrant. And, hey, Susan, uh, hold said, on a second. Susan, because we're running out of time. Um, okay, what is quick, the question? My question, is, my question is, okay, so that was 30 days later she shows up, okay, after the report was even called in with a warrant or a court order to control my conduct. Susan? Okay, yes. Susan, you have to ask me the question because literally okay. they're going to kick me off here. The court order to control my contact. Okay, is it legit if, um, my question is, can I fight the court order now that I basically signed over custody uh, to my ex-husband? Okay, so the answer so is. To drop the case. Let me answer, let me answer the question. Mm -hmm. The answer is probably but you're going to have to talk to an attorney in Indiana and get some really good advice. If you were mm -hmm. here, if you were here in California, um, where I'm licensed, you could fight it, but it doesn't mean that you'll have necessarily a great chance of doing it. But again, you need okay. to talk to an attorney in Indiana. Um, you probably will be able to. I, now, fighting it okay. and winning, you know, that's two different things. Well, it's already been, this was 2018. Uh, they dropped the case. Uh -huh. the, uh, they wanted us to, they said, if you'll just sign him as the primary, we'll just drop it all. They never even did okay. a case plan or anything. Okay. Well, talk and, to talk to your lawyer about getting the kids back in your custody. Call us back, uh, you know, in the next three or four weeks. Give us an update. I want to thank you. Do I need you. to call a custody lawyer, or is it a CPA's case? Did, it sounds like it's a family. Sounds like a 
it sounds like it's a family law case, Susan. Susan, thank you for calling. Thank you for listening. Give us an update in three or four weeks. You get a lot of those calls, a lot of those uh, interviews. About family law? Yeah. Uh, custody battles? Right. No, m- most of the interviews I do are CPS. CPS. CPS, okay. Hey, it's been a great show. Um, this has been CPS. No. The Secret. The Secret. <laughs> How to Fight CPS and Win. I'm Vince Davis. I've been with here with Cynthia Becker. Catch Cynthia Becker on her show, The Reality Series, CPS The Horror Stories. Find her on Facebook and YouTube. We'll see you next week on the radio.